so I've been playing a ton of Metaphor Refantasio, and this game is absolutely incredible. It takes pretty much everything that Atlas has learned from their myriad of awesome RPGs, especially the Persona franchise and Shin Megami Tensei, evolves it a bit, adds in some new flavor, then kind of just puts it all together in a great package. And I think that it's fantastic. It's a perfect marriage of knowing what you're really good at, but then also listening at some of the things that maybe aren't so good with your games and evolving that into a new formula. I think they did a fantastic job with it. And I'm going to continue playing. I'm 38 hours plus in. I beat the first dungeon with the Necromancer. I'm having a ton of fun. And the gameplay flow, the pacing, everything that they've done with this game is just awesome yes maybe not the best graphics whatever performance frame rate whatever the case is it doesn't really matter to me because when i'm playing through the game i'm so enthralled in what the game does i really don't notice any of the other things because the style and the substance is so good overall and i think that that style that flow can actually inspire and i think that there's going to be another one of my favorite franchises out there that could see similar things in terms of them taking what they've learned over the course of a decade plus of making a certain franchise and applying that into something new while taking all of the best parts of that and we're going to get into exactly how i think monolith soft can do that with the next major game that they are working on but before we get into all that what's good everyone oj here welcome back to another video please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and enter into our metaphor refantasio playstation 5 collector's edition giveaway we are going to be announcing the winner on monday so it's coming up very soon here i'll be announcing it on the community page so make sure you go over to the community page vote and comment below so you can enter in to win now before i get into the four key areas where i think that monolith soft is going to change up the formula i am going based off the hypothetical that the next game that they're doing is either going to be a brand new ip or them kind of reinventing the xenoblade series so taking the name taking some of the things that xenoblade does really well or some of the aspects and then turning it into a brand new story there's plenty of information out there and i'll have links for you guys in the description of there are very smart people in the xenoblade universe and the xenoblade fandom that do feel that their next game will be a xenoblade title but kind of just done in a different type of way so i'm going off of that hypothetical although you can apply it just to a brand new ip as well i think that if you look at something like metaphor refantasio while it is definitely a new ip they take a lot of the stuff from the previous games and kind of evolve the persona formula so i think that we could see something like that here now let's go ahead and jump into this here we're going to start off with the pacing of the game i think that xenoblade is actually one of the better paced big jrpgs out there you really kind of just jump right in something kind of happens in your town or your village something dramatic and then they kind of just let you go right into the open world that pacing could be tweaked just a bit and i don't think that they're going to start up a calendar system or something like persona or even fire emblem three houses does but i do think that they are going to do some things with the pacing in terms of how you actually interact what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and what happens from day to day in terms of certain events or things as well i think that that could play into the role here not just because metaphor does but because we've seen nintendo actually take some of their ips that didn't have that like fire emblem three houses for example kind of throw in a curveball because that game actually had a pretty elaborate calendar system so i don't think that they're going to do the exact same thing but i do feel that some of the pacing in the games might be changed up a bit to kind of hype up certain events that are happening or even change up exactly how you go about your leveling you go about you potentially doing side quests and all sorts of things now there was some of that in xenoblade chronicles definitive edition where there were only certain quests or events or things that happened during certain time periods so i think they can kind of play on that aspect a bit too because they've dabbled in it within the whole xenoblade series now next up which i think that is probably the most important when it comes to monolith soft and reaching a bigger audience and base for their games is that's the ui the ui isn't bad and if you play xenoblade chronicles games you know that all that stuff is generally needed but they need to figure out a way to where it doesn't necessarily fill up the whole screen because if you're someone that's not adept with jrpgs or adept with what monolith soft wants to do in their games seeing all the stuff that pops up and seeing all the different things that happens 
it just becomes a sensory overload and it's tough for people even though that all of that stuff is needed don't get me wrong it really is needed it does become a sensory overload for people so i think that what they're probably going to do for the next title is that they're going to find ways to kind of mask some of that information it's still going to be in depth i still think that they're going to make something that's absolutely incredible but I feel that they are going to take some precautions and do some things differently to where the UI can be better placed for people so you don't get all of that stuff blasting you in the face. I do think that it helps that they are going to be going to a more powerful system. They are going to be going to a more capable system. So some of the stuff will be in sharper resolution. Some of the stuff will look better overall. Sometimes if you play Xenoblade games based on the resolution of what game that you're playing, it can look a little bit fuzzy or blurry based on what you're playing. So then it kind of adds to the problems with some of the ui so i see them improving that and finding ways to be a bit more efficient overall with the ui now the next key area is the combat flow combat flow for xenoblade games are usually really good it takes a little bit of time to get going but by the end of the game you know everything you are an efficient machine you're like a battle maestro or conductor you're pretty much commanding everything you're switching characters at least in xenoblade chronicles 3 you're switching characters you're doing different things you're optimizing you're putting the best possible teams that are out there in order to fight based off of what you need to fight and where you are going the combat flow is great but i definitely feel that they're going to try to make things up now in their recruitment drive they said that they're doing a very different type of rpg and monolith soft is so gameplay mechanic heavy when they say different type of rpg they definitely mean that combat flow is going to be completely different is that going to involve getting rid of the auto battle system to where you essentially just walk up to an enemy you draw your sword or whatever you're using and then it just starts attacking automatically you fill up your meters your gauges whatever the case is and then bam you hit out special attacks combos and more very satisfying but i think that they might be switching off from that and maybe going to something a bit different a lot of the most popular things right now for some of the big jrpgs are the hybrid systems between action and turn-based monolith soft system is kind of a hybrid between action turn-based mmo styles kind of a mix of all of them because when you do your big chain attacks that's definitely turn-based but then you also have the auto attacking like an mmo but then you also have the action elements in terms of you pulling off certain special attacks so it's a very unique mix so i'm wondering what they're gonna go with with their next combat flow which is going to be super key monolith soft games obviously stories are great graphics all that good stuff is awesome but the most important thing is absolutely the combat the combat has to feel fluid fun fast and in depth for the monolith soft fans out there so i can't wait to see what they do with that but i am guessing if anything's going to change overall it's going to be the combat flow considering they said that they are doing something very different a very different type of rpg from usual and going all the way back to xenoblade chronicles the original xenoblade chronicles 2 xenoblade chronicles x xenoblade chronicles 3 future redeem torna all the different ones they all have that same style of combat flow but with a lot of changes very different in terms of other things but that combat flow has stayed the same for a decade plus now so i think that's going to be one of the bigger changes that we will see in a key area for monolith soft's next game now last is the graphics i think that obviously you're going from the nintendo switch to the nintendo switch 2 you're gonna have a huge graphic bump here but i think the biggest thing is not necessarily how it's going to look i don't expect it to all of a sudden look like horizon forbidden west or something like that but what i do expect is it for it to be more efficient for it to look smoother for it to run better monolith soft has grappled with nintendo's hardware for a decade plus now to where they weren't necessarily able to get everything that they wanted to do they weren't able to make games in 60 frames for a second they weren't able to add the highest resolutions or stuff to make it a bit more clear they've had to do a lot of different things and sacrifice stuff in order to get their games running efficiently and good the wii u with xenoblade chronicles x that was a miracle type of game there is no other developer on the wii u system that even got close to doing what Monolith Soft did with that open world. Not even close. Nobody even really tried, to be honest. The only other thing is maybe Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And even that has its setbacks compared to what Monolith Soft did, which 
Monolith Soft helped out with Breath of the Wild as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the graphics combine with the UI pacing and flow in order to make a very new and different type of experience, but potentially with the same name of Xenoblade or potentially even a brand new IP that takes a lot of the things that made Xenoblade great, but then adds in and layers on new stuff very much like Metaphor Refantasio. So man, this is very exciting to see this. I think that these key areas are going to be, I would say, very important for Monolith Soft going forward and what they're going to be doing because they are making that big game. Now, when it comes to timing of release, I've talked about this many times before on my channel. I still feel that they are going to have something ready to show within the first year of the Nintendo Switch 2. They've done this multiple times now for the last couple generations. When you look at the Wii U with Xenoblade Chronicles X, that was shown a couple months after the launch of the Nintendo Wii U. And then you look at Xenoblade Chronicles 2, that was shown at the January 2017 event, and it looked awesome at the time. So I do feel that they will use Monolith Soft to showcase what this system can do and of course appeal to the different types of fan bases that nintendo has between the more casual base the platformer base the super smash brothers base the kirby base the all sorts of different types of base of fans animal crossing it's almost like different communities each within what nintendo has so there is that hardcore jrpg base the fire emblems the xenoblades games like that that nintendo knows that they have to have in order to i would just say get those fans excited and of course to buy the system and everything so i feel that this is going to be something that they're going to show off within the first year of the nintendo switch 2's life and i'm hoping that we actually get a sneak peek or something when nintendo actually reveals the price and the event because i'm guessing that they're going to have an actual big event where they go over everything that went so well with the nintendo switch i don't see why they would not do that I think that they can follow the same strategy if they want, have a small teaser trailer at some point revealing the name, some of the features and the gimmicks of what they're going to do, and then later have that big presentation really nailing down all the details, the pre-orders, the games, what you can expect for the first launch window and all of that. I think that would be perfect in order to get the Nintendo Switch 2 off to a very strong start like we saw with the Nintendo Switch. So what do you guys think overall when it comes to the four key areas that I talked about that we could see Monolith Soft take to the next level, especially after the fantastic metaphor Refantasio came out and did very similar things when it comes to taking what worked in SMT, taking what worked in Persona, and of course some of their other games putting it into something that feels fresh and new. I think that Monolith Soft definitely has big plans for what they're doing next, but let me know what you think in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, click that notification bell, and check out my other Nintendo Switch and RPG videos right here on screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.